does that affect your decision for how much of your like medication to take, knowing that when you go to the hospital, that will, if the medication you take isn't enough when you go to the hospital, you'll have to, it, you'll have to wait some time and presumably still feel a large amount of pain. Like, does that sort of weigh into your decision at all when you're at home? Yeah, it does. It, 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 it weighs into my decision if I want to come in or not because um, to wait at least 12 to 24 hours is a lot of time without medicine for pain. And I just started this routine um, maybe about three years now. Um, before, regularly, I would be on methadone dilated at home um, or in the hospital and there is no need for transition it's just a continuous um, but this what what's the difference with this even though it can be hard on my body sometimes because of the dip and then the up it's, that's the thing I just don't like about it um, so I hope they can create something where there's a steadiness um, um, but with the dip and then the up and I get onto Suboxone, what happens, what helps me is that I can function. You know, I'm not a, I'm not sleeping all the time or kind of out of it all the time. I can actually do my thing, you know, and, and that's the one thing I do like about Suboxone. Um, it, it doesn't hold me up. That's great. Okay. You talked a couple times about other sicklers. Like, yes. Can you talk about, like, how you connected with them and like your experience sharing experiences with other people or like just that network? Um, so last year, well, I've been connecting, well, before I, I take you back a bit is that when I was a kid in Canada, I was the only one in this vicinity that I lived in. Um, so a lot of time my parents just thought maybe it's just a, you know, maybe it's just you. Um, but then when I traveled, I met a lot of boys with it and no other girls. Mm -hmm. It's only recently that I've been meeting other girls, other women with sickle cell. Um, it's mostly guys that I've met with sickle cell. So that was interesting to me. Um, so last year I started a campaign called Speak on SC, Speak on Sickle Cell um, dot org. And I started with two other sicklers. Um, and their, their sickle cell is, is different. One's a guy's name's TJ, another one's a girl who name's Cassandra. And we talk about what we do for our care. And um, uh, TJ's, TJ is vegan. And, um, but but he's, he, he gets into, he can get into a lot of crisis too. So when we're, we were campaigning last year with about 21 other countries, um, to spread the word because June 19th is when you have spe uh, Sickle Cell Awareness Day and in September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Um, and so I've met hundreds and um, thousands of sicklers just online. Mm -hmm. and, um, and through this, understanding, say, in um, sicklers in Germany to sicklers in Middle East to sicklers in India, you know, and, and a lot of times it's really incredible to hear, oh my God, you going through the same thing, you know, like the <laughs> same exact situation or type of pain or whatever is interesting to me. I find it fascinating because, you know, at one, at one point you feel oh, I'm not the only one, but at the same time it's like, gosh, you shouldn't be going through the same thing like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, w I wish we could do something where you can be a lead. And, um, but yeah, it's really interesting, you know, it's, it's a diverse amount of, <coughs> of, of spectrum of color of people that have sickle cell, um, and it's really great from Ireland, 